Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Gerber Paraframe Assisted Opener. So stay tuned. Many of you who collect knives are very familiar with the Paraframes made by Gerber, but did you know that they made a version that was assisted opening? Because I didn't. And uh, I noticed that there's also a plunger lock there, so you get that instead of the frame block. But um, I can't believe um, that they made one. And it, they don't even have it listed on their website. They don't even have it listed where I bought it. I, went, I got this at Target. I think it was around 29 bucks. And I went to the Target.com website. It's not there. Gerber website, it's not there. As a matter of fact, it's very hard to find any information on this knife. So, um, I, I did notice there are a couple of websites. I think uh, BladeOps.com, they sell it as a, a kit with a Gerber Crucial or something like that. A, a two-in-one deal. But, um, there's not much information out there. And I thought it would be pretty cool to do a review. Everybody loves the paraphrase. Great EDC. Very skinny. It, um, it it definitely rides very low in your pocket for, uh, you know, concealing. So, let's take a close look. So, this knife definitely has the same lines as all the other paraframes. Your skeletonized uh, steel frame right there. The, the weight of this knife is 3.8 ounces. And when closed, the measurements of this knife is about four and a quarter inches maybe just a hair over you can see the clip has a nice deep carry only a little bit would stick out of your pocket it's uh, strong enough it doesn't feel weak or anything have a nice generous lanyard hole definitely no issue getting 550 cord through there and we have some torque screws holding this all together with a nice open construction open pillar uh, construction I was going to say destruction now one thing I noticed is the very very small stop pin that's probably about the smallest stop pin I've ever seen I'm going to go ahead and just open this up so you can see that you see that pin that's right there very very small um, inside I noticed that there's some bronze phosphorus washers in there which is um, uncharacteristic I was expecting nylon washers you have some very nice thumb studs on both sides that would be ambidextrous and I think that really covers everything outside um, oh pivot screw I don't know what the heck that is but um, definitely something you see on a cheap Chinese knife the other side is the clip is held on by the two torque screws but I don't know if that torque screw acts as a pivot screw or not either way I, I don't like it um, next thing take a look at this blade I'm gonna, well let's let's deploy it Boop. okay assisted opening um, not exactly flying out there there we go I just had to give it a better push so what you see here is a plunger lock that's this button right here so to release it the paraframes usually have a frame lock that you would be pushing like this right here. Well, you don't have that here. Frame, the uh, frame is solid. What you have is a plunger, so you can see how that plunger works right there. It sort of goes into a groove in the back of the blade. It opens up there. You could actually almost make out the groove in there. Right there, you can see the groove that that would come in. And that plunger, there's probably a spring under there somewhere. Now, do you notice something? <laughs> look how thin, look how skinny this blade is. That is too skinny for me. I, I would never personally carry a blade that's that skinny, that narrow. I, I'm just, I just don't like it. I don't feel like I can push this blade. Drop point blade hollow grind about halfway up this is a combo edge you have serrations here that um, don't look too bad and then you have your plain edge so it looks like almost 50 50 
And the way that this deploys is you have a torsion bar, a torsion style bar. You can see part of that bar there. So what that does, and again to fold this, you press the button. What it does is once the blade gets out to a certain point, that bar is pushing that blade out. And it feels like it's, you know, barely out. Once it gets to maybe 10 or 20 degrees, it flies open pretty pretty fast pretty good pretty smooth um, lock up no up and down play no side to side play there is some functional jimping right up here because you don't really have a very deep choil finger, finger choil right here so they do add a little bit of jimping here that is fairly functional and the handle I have large hands, does feel pretty comfortable despite its smaller size. It's not really that small, but pretty good. The blade length is 3 inches, by the way. The blade steel is 7CR17MOV, which is a low-end Chinese steel. And it has a... I'm trying to figure out this finish. I think that is a, a, like a, a paint of some sort, maybe a tinny titanium nitrite type or just paint I'm not sure they don't really say and again there's not much information out there you have a Gerber logo right there so anyway let's do a couple of tests I got a piece of paper right here we could go ahead and do a a test to see how well this cuts and folks I'm I'm push cutting right there so very good very very sharp well done the other thing I like to do when I have these knives is to stab them into some wood to make sure and rock them a little bit this is soft pine so the the tip of this blade should not be affected because it is soft pine if it does get affected then we have a heat treatment problem so let's take a close look at that and it looks like it's pretty good so again to fold the blade up you just press this so um, let's see re blade retention is really good blade centering when folded up is pretty good so that's the uh, power frame assisted opening knife. So do I recommend this knife? Well it does have some pretty good points. It does have the brass phosphorus washers, does have some nice jipping, assisted opening works pretty good, nice gen, gen, <laughs> gen, I can't talk today, generous lanyard hole. Really nice. I like the skinny profile that could get into your pocket nice and deep and it's nice and skinny so it would make for a pretty good EDC, right? Well, there's some things that I really don't like. One thing that really worries me is that tiny, tiny, tiny stop pin. However, the, uh, the lock does also hold the blade from going both ways too. So that type of lock, this plunger lock, also helps it resist going back. So maybe the combination of the two sort of augment each, the... Uh, that, that plunger sort of augments the um, blade stop to, to keep the blade from flipping back. But again, it's not something that I feel too comfortable about. And I really don't like the very skinny <laughs> blade. I just don't like it. So, and, and I don't know what's going on with the uh, pivot screw thing going on there. And you can't move the clip anywhere, though it does have very nice ambidextrous dumb stuff so to me it's a it's a mixed bag and for thirty dollars it's not worth it you know maybe for fifteen dollars I, I I could say yeah go ahead and get it if this is the type of knife you're looking for but um really overall I I don't recommend this knife especially for what I paid for it so that's it all right well thank you very much for joining me here at the gear obsession channel I really appreciate every friend, viewer, <laughs> that's scary, subscriber, and you, and I hope you have a great 
you, Nate. Take care.